We can't have to make it absolutely perfect because if it's not, when they put the, the Brontos back into our miniature, the Bronto feet won't touch the ground when they run. So what we did was actually utilise the previous department's information to drive the computer control cutter and cut all of our profiles out of the polystyrene sheet and then utilise those as the framework for our miniatures. And in turn, we can now deliver miniatures that correlate back to the previs at a much greater degree. Miniatures on Kong were hugely important because they became our world. We did very little location shooting for Kong. Peter wanted to create this from the ground up. He wanted every shot to have been completely designed to create the mood that he was looking for in that particular sequence. And the only way to do that is to build it. So Kong used way more miniatures than any of the Lord of the Rings films. I mean, I think it probably used as many miniatures as all three Lord of the Rings films combined. And um, it was a combination of taking the previous geo and the Photoshop paintings and matching them together. That artwork would then go down with the undressed mini to miniatures to Alex Funky. Those guys would dress it looking at the artwork and they did an amazing job at matching. And they were able to start shooting the miniatures before we ever started shooting live action photography. So we're getting ready to shoot what is the actual first production film rolled on King Kong. This is a, the middle of the gigantic scene where Kong fights the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Camera's ready. Let's do it. In the original film, the proof of concept was that fight. And so sort of an homage to that, Peter said, we're going to do this same sequence first. Shooting in a studio, you're starting with a blank slate. So the art department have to build a huge number of relatively complicated sets. There was a non-stop building program on King Kong. We had to build everything, you know, so trees, bark, um, vines, um, plants, flowers, even the water that went into the swamps and all that sort of stuff was manufactured um, because everything had a textural value that you can't just go out and buy. We realised that looking at what the needs of Kong were, we didn't really have a studio that was big enough. So we started building one at um, our Stone Street Studios very soon after Return of the King finished. So this is the Kong stage, this is the new stage of the building. It'll be our biggest sound stage, so uh, very important to us. We're going to build all the big Kong jungle sets in here. We hope to have it finished by the end of August. Uh, we're going to start double shifts from Monday onwards. The Kong stage was almost finished by the time the actors arrived, but not quite. I suppose I only had like one and a half wall on at the time. And I said to Peter, is this for your next movie? And I said, no, this is for Kong. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it, you know. And I, You're not kidding me, right? And I think they were amused to see, to, to walk onto the lot and um, see a studio that was still basically being constructed uh, while they were arriving to shoot the movie. But uh, the stage got finished and, um, and it performed incredibly well for the, for the film.